Pretty much every soldier who went to war and came back is seen as a hero in his or her home country. To be a soldier you have to be brave and with great bravery come some pretty epic war stories. In this list we'll be showing you 5 war heroes you probably never heard of. We would like to give a big shout out to viewer Nolwyn Stanley for suggesting this video. Number 5. The Free French Army After the French government fell to Germany in World War II, the biggest problem for the French resistance was scraping together enough soldiers to build a halfway effective army. Charles de Gaulle, the leader of the Free French Army, decided to reach further afield bringing in fighters from the French territories in Africa. The army consisted with a mix of African, Arab and Tahitian soldiers and white French officers. The Free French Army fought victory after bloody victory right up to Paris's doorstep and they were ready and willing to march in and liberate the capital with a little help from their American and British allies. Unfortunately their allies didn't like the fact that there were an army mainly of coloured soldiers. This was a time in history where blacks and whites were still segregated in the American military and forbidden from fighting together. The Allies had an image to uphold and they saw it better for the people to watch Paris liberated by Aryan soldiers than a bunch of African and Arab Muslims. So Charles de Gaulle quickly scrambled together a bunch of Spanish soldiers, who had much lighter skin and sent the Africans home without any of the glory. To add insult to injury, in 1959 the French randomly cut off the African African soldiers' military pensions and tried to cover up their role in the war. Number 4. We Told Pilecki when mysterious concentration camps started appearing in Poland during World War II, one agent of the Polish resistance, Witold Pilecki, thought it would be wise to find out what the hell was going on. Pilecki decided to investigate personally by deliberately getting himself arrested by the Nazis. For the next two and a half years, Pilecki was held up in Auschwitz. He reported the horrors of the concentration camps like he was reporting the weather, stating, We were slightly sprinkled by cold water, I got blown in my jaw with a heavy rod, I spat out my two teeth, bleeding began, from that moment we were mere numbers, I wore the number 4859. After gathering all the information he wanted, Pilecki casually escaped the camp in 1943. Although infiltrating and escaping Auschwitz both individually qualified him as the most badass person in Europe, Pilecki went back to go another round with the Gestapo fighting in the Warsaw Uprising after which the Nazis threw him back into another concentration camp. After the war Poland went full communist. Although Pilecki was a hero and helped the Soviet Union during the war, he saw Stalin as Hitler but with just a bigger moustache. So he went right back to Poland to continue his hobby of infiltrating and researching horrific murderous regimes. The Polish Soviet government decided that this was not cool and they swiftly arrested their greatest war hero and gave him three death sentences. Right up until the Soviet Union collapsed in the 90s, even mentioning his name was enough to get you shot in Poland. They've recently repealed this policy and only named the street after him. Number 3. Chiun Sugihara during World War II, Japanese Consul General Chiun Sugihara and his wife Yukiko saw how bad things were getting for the Jews and figured they might be safer in Japan than playing hide and seek throughout Europe. But the Japanese government, having taken a liking to Hitler, refused permission for him to issue visas to Jews to get him out of harm's way. He did anyway in direct disobedience to his superiors. As the Nazis encroached, Chiun and his wife started issuing Japanese visas around the clock. In the 11th hour, even as they were forced to flee the country, Sugiara was still issuing visas and throwing them out of a train window as it pulled away. In the end, it's estimated he saved the lives of 6,000 Jews in his manic spree. Japan was, at that time, still a country that believed in the samurai code of honour the government. The fact that Chi Un saved thousands of people from slaughter took a distant back seat to the fact he disobeyed an order, pretty much the worst thing a Japanese person could do at the time. When the government found out what he had done, he was punished out of government without ceremony, and was forced to live the life of a dishonoured man until he died in 1986. The Japanese only just apologised to his family on October 2000, acknowledging that yeah, he probably was a decent guy. Number 2. George Vizhnovic 
In the summer of 1944, the Allies undertook a series of missions to Romania to attack Hitler's oil fields. The Nazis started shooting down American bombers and the surviving airmen were retrieved by a group of Serbian resistant fighters called the Chetniks. The Chetniks, although they hated Nazis too, weren't on very good terms with the Allied forces. So it came down to George Vujnovic, an American officer with Serbian roots, to contact the Chetniks and negotiate for the prisoners' release. He masterminded a huge operation codenamed Halyard Mission, during which more than 500 airmen were escorted out of hostile territory by a group of war-hardened Serbians. However, the Serbians and Croatians hated each other, and during World War II, the highest profile Croatian in the world was Yugoslavian leader Josip Broz Tito. It just so happened that Tito and his communist regime were American allies, and the only thing he hated more than Nazis were the Chetniks. To maintain a good relationship with Tito, the American government classified the Halyard mission, covering up the fact that they had collaborated with the Serbians. The sad ending for the Chetniks is that after the war, Tito hunted them down and executed their leader, while the American government did nothing. As for Voljovnik, he was eventually awarded the Bronze Star for his efforts in October 2010. Number 1. Richard Martinko Richard Martinko started his career just as badass as he left it. During Martinko's time with the US Navy and later as a Navy SEAL in Vietnam, he and his team became such a problem for the Viet Cong that a 5,000 piaster reward was offered for his head. In a career that eerily resembles the Rambo franchise, he was highly decorated in Vietnam and then went looking for other conflicts to sort out in places like Cambodia. There is even a story about him body surfing behind a military patrol boat while under enemy fire. Martinko became so elite in the Navy SEALs that they started having to invent new, more elite teams just to find somewhere to put him. Eventually, he wound up commanding something called Red Cell. His job was to fly around the world attacking and infiltrating the US military's own bases in order to test their security and show how the military would cope if the enemy had someone like Martinko on its side. Ironically, Red Cell was so good at what they did, they embarrassed the military. Martinko took his job dead seriously, kidnapping high-ranking personnel and even their families, mildly torturing them to get nuclear codes and wound up kidnapping one admiral twice. It wasn't long before a bunch of bruised, disgruntled commanders decided to have Martinko kicked out of the military. Naval Investigative Services spent a reported $60 million on an investigation to find something to pin on him. The investigation fell flat and even after Matsinko retired, they kept going after him in an effort to find anything that would stick. The FBI eventually did convict him on trumped up charges and sentenced him to a year in some minimum security prison. He used that time to write a number one best-selling autobiography called Rogue Warrior which embarrassed the hell out of the military again. He is currently forbidden by law from writing any more about the military, so he now exclusively writes popular fiction about the adventures of an elite badass who is totally not him embarrassing the US Navy. Thank you for watching and if you have a video idea, why not leave a comment below and if we make it, we'll give you a big shout out. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more awesome daily lists of all things 5. This is all 5 and until next time, feed your mind.